So in this video, we are going to learn how to send Slack notification for Outlook calendar event. Now suppose guys, you and your team member communicate over Slack and you are using Microsoft Outlook calendar to maintain all the new events, upcoming events. Now you want that whenever a new event is created in your Outlook calendar, Microsoft Office 365 calendar, you want to send those new event details to your team members on Slack. So let me tell you, you can actually automate this process. So in this automation, whenever a new event will be created, automatically the event details will be sent as a message on our Slack channel. If you want to know how you can set up this automation, for that you just have to come with me to my screen. So as you can see, here we are on Public Connect's dashboard. Now to reach this dashboard, you will get a free sign up link of Public Connect in the description box below. By clicking on that link, you can create your free Public Connect account in just two minutes. And after reaching to this dashboard, just click on create workflow and give this workflow a name. For example, I would like to name my workflow as Microsoft 365 calendar to Slack and then just click on create. Now you can see that our workflow is open over here and in this workflow we have two different windows. First one is the trigger window and second one is the action window. So triggers and actions are basically those two concepts, those two principles on which this whole automation works on where the trigger says when this happens and the action says do this. So let's begin with our trigger window. Now the idea here is first we have to connect our Microsoft 365 calendar, our Outlook calendar with Public Connect in the trigger window so that every time a new event is created in our calendar, automatically the details of that event will be received inside Public Connect. And after that, using Public Connect, we are going to send those new event details on our Slack channel as a channel message to update our team members. So let's see how it is done. Now here in trigger window in choose app, search for Microsoft 365, Microsoft Office 365. Just select it. And then in trigger event from the drop down, select the trigger event as new calendar event. After selecting our trigger event, click on connect and select add new connection. Now here guys, we have to connect our Microsoft Office 365 account with Public Connect, our Outlook account with Public Connect. So to make this connection, click on this connect with Microsoft Office 365, select your Outlook account, then just scroll down and click on yes over here. And when we click on yes, we will see our Microsoft Office 365 account will get connected with Public Connect. After making this connection, the next thing it asks us is the calendar. And here in this drop down, you can see a list of all the calendars which we have created in our Outlook account. So right now in my Outlook account, in my calendar account, here you can see that on the left side, I have created four different calendars. And list of these same calendars can be seen over here in Pabli Connect. So from this drop down, we have to select the calendar from which we want to get the new event details. I have this calendar named as Pabli Connect. And I want that whenever a new event is created in this particular calendar, the details of that event should be shared on our Slack channel. So we want to set up this automation for this particular calendar. So from the drop down, select that calendar over here. After selecting the calendar, here you can see a button of save and send test request. When we will click on this save and send test request button, the details of the last event, most recent event which we have created in our calendar will be received inside Public Connect. So before clicking on it, let's create a new event over here. For example, I will create an event for 24th of April. Let's enter the name of the event as test event, just a dummy name. And after naming it, let's select the time. The time is, for example, the event starts at 10 a.m. and ends at 1 p.m. Then after that, let's add a description that this is just a test event, just a DMB description. So just now we have entered the details of this new event. If you want, you can add other details as well of the event. Right now, I'm not entering any more details and then just click on save. When we click on save, the event is created in Outlook calendar. We will get back to Public Connect and click on save and send test request. After clicking on save and send test request, here you can see that we have received some response. And in this response, you will see the details of the last event which we have created. Here you can see that the response name subject, you can see the name of the event which we have created, the same test event over here. Then after that, here you can see the start time zone and you can see the start date and time. 
we have the date and time that at what date and time this event is going to get started. So we have selected the date and time as 24th of April at 10 a.m. At 10 a.m. this event was going to get started. But here in response, you can see that we have received the correct date, but the time is 4.30 a.m. Now this is because we have entered the date and time according to the Indian time zone. Right now I'm in India and I have selected the date and time according to that time zone. But while sending the response, while sending the new event details to Public Connect, Microsoft 365 has sent us the event start date and time in UTC time zone. So there is a difference of 5 hours and 30 minutes between the UTC time zone and India time zone. Like when it's 4.30 according to UTC time zone, 4.30 a.m., it's 10 a.m. according to Indian time zone. So we have received this date and time in UTC time zone. And in the next step, we are going to change the time zone of this date and time as well. Also, the format of this date and time is pretty complex. This is not a day-to-day -day format which we use in our day-to-day -day life. So here we are going to change the format and time zone of the start date time as well in the next step. And it's a very easy process. Then after that, we will scroll down further and we will see some other details for this same new event. We will scroll down. Here you can see the end date and time as well. We have received the date and time that at what date and time this event is supposed to end. And this date and time is also in UTC time zone. So the date is correct, but the time is 7.30 a.m. And we have selected 1 p.m. as the time. Then we will scroll down and here you can see the description of this event too. This is just a test event, but whatever description we have added over here. So this means the step one of setting up this automation is completed. We have successfully connected our Outlook calendar with Public Connect and received the details of a new event from Microsoft 365 calendar in our workflow. Now after this, we want to send these new event details as a message on Slack. But as we discussed before doing that, we have to change the format and time zone of the start date time and also of the end date time of the event, as you can see over here. And to make this happen, to change the format and the time zone, we are going to use a feature, a module of Public Connect that is called date time formatter. So we will just scroll down, come to our action window and here in choose app, search for date time formatter and just select it. After selecting date time formatter by Pavli, an action event from the drop down, select format date with time zone. Click on connect. After clicking on connect, here the first thing it asks us is the date. That what is the date, what is the response whose format and time zone we want to change. So we wanted to change the format and time zone of the start date and time which we have received of an event from Microsoft Outlook calendar. So we are going to map this response of start date time over here in this date field. And guys, the process of mapping is very simple. Simply click on this field and here in the drop down, you will see a list of responses which we have received from Outlook calendar. And out of all of these responses, select this response of start date time and it will be mapped over here. After mapping the date whose format and time zone we want to change, the first thing it asks us is from format. And here in the drop down, you can see a list of different formats over here. So here in this drop down, we have to select that in which particular format this date and time is present right now. So this is the particular format in which this date and time is present. So we are going to select this format in from format. Now it is asking us to format. So we have this format of day, month, year, hours, minutes and seconds. So I want to change the date and time to this particular format. So we have selected that format over here. Then it is asking us from time zone. So as we saw in response, we have received this date and time in UTC time zone. So this date and time is right now present in UTC time zone. So from this drop down, we are going to search for UTC time zone and select it. And in two time zone, you have to select your own time zone in which you want to change it. So I'm in India and in a India, we follow the Asia Kolkata time zone. So in two time zone, I have selected that. You can select your desired time zone according to your choice. And then just click on save and send test request. After clicking on save and send test request, here you can see that the same date and time which we have received as a start date time of the event from Microsoft 365 calendar, you can see the same date and time in response. But this time the format and the time zone is changed. The date is 24th of April, the same date for which we have created the event. And also we have received the time according to the Indian time zone, that is 10 a.m. The same Indian time zone in which we have created this event. So we have successfully changed the format and the time zone of the start date time. Now we have to follow this same process, this same date time format a step for our end date and time as well, because we have received the event end date time in the UTC time zone and this particular format. 
So what we can do, we can basically follow the same steps and add another step. You can just click on these three dots, click on this copy step button, and then once again click on these three dots and click on paste step. So this exact same step will be pasted once again. It will be added once again in our workflow. Now in this step, just change the date map date over here. Earlier we have mapped the start event start date and time. Now from this drop down from Outlook calendar responses, we are going to map the event end date and time over here. Just select it. The format is exactly the same. The two format is also the same. The time zone is UTC from time zone and in two time zone is Asia Kolkata. Just click on save and send test request. So in this way, using another feature of public in it, that is copy paste action step, we have copied the step, pasted it below and changed the map data. And then you can see that here in response, you can see the same date and time at which the event was supposed to end 24th of April at 1 p.m. So we have successfully changed the date time format of start time and end time. So after changing these details, like here in response, we have the changed format and time zone of, of event start date time. And here in third step, after using the date time format for the second time, we have the end date and time of event in the new format and time zone. Now let's send a message on Slack with all of these details. For that, we just have to click on this add action step button. And then here in choose app, search for Slack. Just select Slack. And then in action event from the drop down, select the action event as send channel message. Click on connect and select add new connection. Now here guys, we are going to connect our Slack account with Pavli Connect. And to make this connection, we just have to click on this connect with Slack button. And then after clicking on it, it is asking us for the token type, the connection type. So while making the connection, we have two different options. Either we can make a user-based connection or we can make a bot-based connection. What is the difference between user-based connection and bot-based connection? Here is a hyperlink, just click on it and it will take you to a page on our forum. At this page, you will find all the details, what is the difference between user-based connection and bot-based connection. So you can refer to this page and select what type of connection you want to set up. I want to set up a user-based connection, so I'm going to enter user over here and then just click on save. After clicking on save, because I have already logged into my Slack account in my browser, Pavli Connect has detected the exact same account. So what we have to do, we just have to scroll down and click on this allow button over here. And as we click on allow, we will see our Slack account will get connected with Pavli Connect. After making this connection, the first thing it asks us is the channel. So here in this drop down, you will see a list of all the channels which we have created in our Slack account. Here you can see the list. Now here guys, I have created a channel named as new event details. And on this channel, we want to share the details of a new event created in our Outlook calendar. So from this drop down, we are going to select for that same channel, new event details on which we want to send the message. After selecting channel, it is asking us the message that what is the message which we want to send. So I want my message to be hello team. Okay, so this is the kind of simple message I want to send on my Slack channel with the new event details. Hello team, a new event is created in calendar. Event name, description, start date and time, end date and time. And in this message, we are going to enter all of these details. So we have received the name of the event as a response in our trigger response from Outlook calendar. So here in this response, you can see that this is the response. And we are going to map the same response of event name over here in this field of message. So just click here. And then from this drop down from Microsoft Office responses, select the response of event name and map it. So here in front of event name, map it. Then let's map the description. So from the drop down from office responses, select the response of description. Here it is and map it. Then after this, it is asking us for the start date and time. So using date time formatter, we have changed the format and the time zone of start date and time. So from the responses of the first date time formatter, which we have used, select the response of updated date and time format, and then follow the same process for end date and time as well. So after second time using date time formatter, we have changed the format and the time zone of end date and time. So in this way, I have created a simple message with some basic details over here to update my team members. If you want, you can create any message and map any details of a new event which we have received from Outlook calendar in this message. After creating the message, it is asking us image URL and image alt text. So if you want using this action step, you can actually send some image and image alt text as well as a message on your Slack channel. Right now in this video, we aren't sending any images so we can ignore this field for now. 
then it is asking us bot name and bot icon. So if you have selected a bot based connection between public connect and slack, then you can actually change the name of the bot who is going to send the message and also the icon of the bot. Right now we have selected the user based connection. So we can ignore this field for now. Then it is asking us auto expand link, link username and channel name, reply broadcast and thread message ID. So all of these fields are not mandatory, not required. I'm going to ignore this field for now. But if you want to use it, you can refer to the help text given below you. And then you can use this field as well. And then just click on save and send test request. After clicking on save and send test request, here you can see that we have received some response. And this response seems to be a positive response to us. This response shows that the message which we have created over here, this message has been sent on this particular Slack channel with the event details which we have created in Outlook calendar. So let's check it. We'll go to a Slack account. And yes, guys, here you can see that on our Slack account, this message has been shared. Hello team, a new event is created in calendar. Event name is test event. We have the same event description, the same start date and time and end date and time of the event, which we have entered while creating this event in the calendar. This means the automation workflow which we have created in this video is working perfectly fine using Pavli Connect. Now here guys, using this automation, whenever a new event is going to get created in our Microsoft Office 365 calendar, automatically the same event details will be sent as a channel message on our Slack channel to update our team members. Now after setting up this automation, let's test this automation once. We'll go to our calendar and we are going to create a new event. For example, let's take the event name as real time test. Let's select the time as for example, 1 p.m. is the start time and 5 p.m. is the end time. This is a real time test. So this is the description of this particular event. Let's click on save. So just now we have added a new event in our Outlook calendar. And we will see as we add this event, within 10 minutes, the same event details will be shared as a message on our Slack channel. And sharing the message takes 10 minutes of time because the connection of Outlook calendar, Microsoft Office 365 and Pavli Connect is a polling based connection. And in this type of connection, Pavli Connect will check for new data, new event details in our calendar every 10 minutes. In last 10 minutes, if it found some new event details, it will get that data and then this automation workflow will get started. It will get triggered. So let's wait for 10 minutes over here. Okay, so we have successfully waited for 10 minutes. Now let's check our Slack account. And yes, guys, here you can see that within 10 minutes on our Slack channel, a new message is shared. The message says, hello team, a new event is created in calendar. Event name is real time test. The same event name which we have entered over here while creating this event. Then you can see the same description. This is a real time test. Same event start date and time. 25th of April 2023, 1 p.m. is the start date time. And 25th of April 2023, 5 p.m. is the end date and time. The same start date and time and end date and time which we have entered by creating this event. So this means guys, we have tested this automation in real time and it is working perfectly fine. So not just these applications, you can connect plenty of other applications with Pavli Connect. And one more important thing, you will find the clone link of this exact same workflow in the description box below. By clicking on that link, you can clone the same workflow into your own Pavli Connect account and use this automation workflow for free. Also, let me tell you, Pavli Connect offers you a free plan. And in this plan, you will get some free tasks every month into your own Pavli Connect account. So if you want to try and test this automation, you can do it for absolutely free. If you have any kind of doubts or queries, you can post them on forum.pavli.com. So if this video was helpful to you, you can obviously like this video, comment down to your suggestion and don't forget to share it with others. So guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you. Have a great day.